In today's video, we're going to be cooking the human polenta pea burgers from season 5, episode 2 of Bob's Burgers, titled Tina and the Real Ghost. There's a ghost in this basement. Yes! What? A ghost? Who said ghost? We have a ghost? Oh my god, oh my god! Oh my god. You need to catch it and get rid of it. Like salmon. What a great day to be alive, friends. I am back, and I'm ready to make another Bob's Burger, Burger of the Day. But today's episode is going to push us to our absolute limits. Three different sliders, all with different ingredients. So essentially, it's going to be three burgers, one video. I'm nervous. We're gonna kill it, though. Let's get started, because this might be time-consuming. Wish me luck, hold my hand, spank my ass, let Let's get it. We're going to kick things off by preparing some cherry tomatoes for roasting, easing them into it by making your mama jokes and criticizing their haircuts. We're going to want to get some olive oil in there to help with the roasting so that the fat can carry the flavor of our herbs into the tomatoes as well as fuse for a nice oily dressing later on. Mix everything around so that all the ingredients become good friends, then enemies, and then lovers again. Garlic certainly makes the world go around, so be confident in the amount that you choose to add. Growing up, I actually hated tomatoes, but at some point they just started to click, and now I can eat them kind of raw with a little bit of Salt. Either my taste buds changed or liking tomatoes is a sign that I have become a man. But as someone who still freaks out when they encounter a spider, I'm going to lean with the former. Well, in my opinion, it already looks incredible. So what do you say we get this into the oven then? Well, I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Roast them in the oven and bear witness to the beautiful and soft tomatoes that come out. It looks stunning and the dressing we have created should be very flavorful and aromatic. Also, the combination of colors is pretty nice to look at as well. The skins from the tomatoes should be broken down and easy to fold over each other. Things are going well, but there's still a lot to do and many ingredients still missing. What am I missing? I'm bored. Someone explain it to me quick. We now get to feel like fancy chefs by creating a wine reduction sauce. That's right, for our mushroom burger slider. Honestly, just getting to use the word reduction means that we have made it. So congratulations. The sauce is going to be simple. Just some red wine of your choice, butter, and herbs. Mix it around frequently while it simmers until it reduces to about one fourth cup of sauce. The sauce should end up being pretty sweet and savory. The next step is to create another sauce, but this time with a cream cheese base. We will need to soften the cream cheese so it's way more manageable and easier to combine with our other ingredients. Our mixture is going to be a combination of cream cheese, sour cream, mayo, as well as a decent amount of grated Parmesan cheese. You can use the pre-grated stuff, but what's the fun in saving time and energy? Joking aside, the fresh stuff is significantly more potent and therefore better, but the pre-grated stuff is still pretty good. The sauce isn't done though. We need to introduce some baby spinach into a hot pan for about a minute or so to help them release their moisture and begin to wilt. Pretty satisfying process overall. And I love a cooking process that's incredibly easy and quick. But get that pan out of here so we can heat up some artichokes. I assume artichokes are a vegetable, but I feel like they're one of those foods that are barely in anything and yet are in enough to be considered fairly common. So with that said, I'm not too familiar with their game. I do love them though, and I love the taste. However, I have been known to get carried away after a mean spinach and artichoke dip, which happens to be pretty close to what we're making today. The dip, sauce, mixture, or whatever you wanna call it is ready to enter its final evolution, but we really need to mix it together and with the help of our hand mixture, get it to the point of smooth consistency. I'm getting exhausted. Things are coming along pretty well, but we still have a few more steps to go. So we're gonna start prepping our meat now. It's meat time, the time of meat. So let's do what we do best, which is form our patties and season them like our life has one purpose. This is what we've been training for, friends. Do not let yourselves down at this point. So this is polenta. And it's what our buns are gonna be made out of today. Similar to cornbread and grits, at least that's my take on it. It's unique, and I've never heard of it before in my life. So I ask you, if I wreck this polenta beyond recognition, that you spare me. Let me live to tell the tale so that others may learn what not to do. And I really mean no offense. I'm just trying to stay true to the book's vision and make Bob Belcher proud. At first it started to look pretty suspicious, but I continued to boil away the moisture and something magical began to happen. It started to thicken up. 
I got some butter in there and yet it still became dry and strong. Where's Tina? Crying into her butt? <laughs> no, my butt is dry and strong. Ew. Once the polenta reaches a good level of thickness, we can wrap it up in some plastic wrap and then transition it into the fridge or freezer to help solidify it. In the meantime, we can start cooking our patties. The sizzle, the sizzle is music to my ears and is truly relaxing to me. I feel like Mozart, Beethoven, you know, some of, the, some of the best of all time, creating the most perfect symphony of sounds. I might be a little less talented though. The patties are coming along, they're looking very juicy and delicious, and a decent slice of fresh mozzarella will pair very nicely with our tomatoes later on. Back to the polenta. This is probably the most tricky part of creating these burgers. We have to form out our own buns, and looking back, I should have let it rest a little bit longer in the cold, but for the sake of the video, I risked it for the biscuit. The most difficult part was making them the right size across the board. I mostly just use the eye test, but I highly recommend some sort of mold or template if you want them as uniform as possible. We will then toast them up the same way we do with regular buns, except we're going to flip them and leave them on a little bit longer. We are finally on the home stretch, and the final test is cooking a portobello mushroom to replace a patty for the final burger. Olive oil and balsamic vinegar will be the main flavor enhancers to this beautiful beast. A little flaky salt to finish it up, and then we shall build. First burger, first bun, followed by our cheesy patty, and then a nice touch of our tomatoes topped with our olive oil dressing. Top bun, and then we move on to the next. Bottom bun, juicy patty, artichoke spread. The contrasting colors look delicious. Final burger time, bottom bun. Some arugula for some added texture, our cooked and juicy mushroom, followed by a drizzle of our wine reduction sauce, and completed by our top bun. What a sight to behold. Woo! Holy moly guacamole, we are finished. Exorbitant amount of effort these took, but I'm excited to bite into them. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna tell you how each one tastes, and then we can just wrap this whole video up. So let's go for it. The sauce, the cream cheese sauce is amazing. The polenta buns, so rich and fluffy. I'm not sure how I feel though. On to the mushroom burger. That one is very good. Um, I may have made the bun a little too thick. The sweetness from the wine reduction sauce combined with everything else, it's very good. Let's keep the gravy train rolling. On to the third one. Oh gosh, it's falling apart on me. Let's review them. An 8.35 out of 10 for the first burger, really solid and flavorful, followed by an eight out of 10 for the mushroom burger. And then finally an 8.25 for the white sauce burger, and I recommend all three. If you liked the video, hit that like button, subscribe for more Bob's Burger content, as well as more cooking and travel videos coming out very soon. I'll see you then, peace.